So, hello everybody. Uh, this is another edition of Roller Pigeon Evolution. Uh, I'm your host, Smitty. Today we are joined by Richard Apodaca. We are joined by Arturo Sanchez. Arturo Sanchez. Arturo, yeah. So we're joined by Homer Crader. That is the main reason we are here to interview him. And um, just to kind of get into his head, Homer is, I'll let him tell you, how old are you today, Homer? 102. He's 102 years old. So that is a wealth of information and perspective that you and I can only imagine. So we're gonna get into a couple of questions and just find out how Homer's done it and, and, and how we can try to emulate him in just the smallest way. So Homer. Yes. What would you say was the largest influence in your life as far as with pigeons? Who was the one person that had the greatest impact on you? Uh, I think Leroy Smith had the best pigeons of anybody I ever met. I, I bought a pair from him for ten dollars, which was a lot of money back in, in them days. Right. But they reproduced fantastic birds for me. J. Leroy Smith. So J. Leroy Smith was one of the people that had the biggest impact on Homer. Yeah. Now, what would you say about the quality of his birds led you to that? You, you mean today? No, no. What would you say was the key factor that led you to choose his birds over someone else's? Well, I heard nothing but good reports about his birds, and I had never met the man, but right. I wrote to him and asked him if he would sell me a pair. Right. So he told me he'd sell me a pair for ten dollars. To me, that was a lot of money, but I bought them and I never regretted it. Do you, Everything I got out of his birds was great. Do you remember what year that was? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing I have a problem with is it's at times like that. Well, well, I was only about, let's see, maybe 15 or 18 years oh, wow. old at the time. Okay. Another question. So, if I were to name some of these people, tell me if you know them. Oh, right. Um, Lester Lee Meyer. Oh, yeah, of course. Stan Polona. Yeah, I knew him good. Bill Pensum. I, I knew him. Bill Pensum never liked me. He never liked you? <laughs> no. Why? He's, well, he, judged, he was judging a show one day, and when I picked a first, second, third person pigeon, I said, I like the one you picked in the second, for the second place better than the one you picked for. He, he said to everybody, oh, that homer don't know nothing about pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys had a disagreement. He, he, in, in, he, in a, he, he didn't like, he didn't take to me at all. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, well, well Bob, One, Bob Reswell used to come here all the time, and he wrote an article in the Pigeon Journal. Uh -huh. That he seen more rolling here than he ever seen at Penson, and of course that got Penson really. That he saw more yeah. roll at your house than he ever saw at Penson. Yeah. And yeah. who who wrote that article? Uh, Bob Breswell. Bob Breswell. Interesting. Hold on one second, Homer. Sure. Let me change something on here. There. So we got better sound. Um. So. Did you ever see a kit fly at, at Pensum's? You know, that's the strange part about it. I went to Pensum's one time, and there was about three of us guys there, and he was so frustrated, his birds weren't doing damn, and he threw out birds and they were rolling down and everything else. Wow. And he was so hurt, you know, that, because he, like you say, he was famous. Right. But he, he got birds from Smith, and he was selling them as his birds too, you know. Now, are you familiar with 514? 14. 514. Are you familiar with 514 birds? Yeah. I, I, I don't recall their band. I remember the, some of the band numbers of mine, but I don't remember his. Now, what was your family primarily that you raised? Um, what well, bloodline did you did you uh, have? Well, I kind of made my own in a way, but uh, I, I used them Smith birds and crossed them in with the rollers that I had. Okay. And then, uh, and, them birds was kept so pure that when I crossed them, they, they done fantastic. So I had real, real good luck with uh, Smith. I'd say Smith birds was the best birds I ever had. How long did your birds take to come in to the roll? Uh, that, I don't know. They usually were later than most people. Okay, so the Smith birds, yeah. yeah. As, as a rule, that's what I found. Yeah. The Smith birds tend to come in later, but, but they when were, they come into the roll, wow, they, you better they, look they, out. Yeah, that's what, that, I guess, yeah, exactly the way I feel. Yeah, I think those birds, because they came in later into the roll, they had developed mature muscle. Exactly. And they could exactly. control it. Oh, definitely. I, yeah. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. So, I got another question. What do you think about the muscle cock theory? Using Who? a muscle cock. Using a muscle cock. You know when they say a muscle cock? Have you ever heard somebody use that term? No, I'm not familiar with the term. Okay. 
So the muscle cock theory, basically, it's based on the fact that your cocks are going to be far larger and more muscular yeah. than your hens. Well, we realize that, yeah. Well, so you agree with it, then, yeah. in that sense. Yeah, but I never went by the pigeon itself. I, I judge them only what, by what they did in the air. You judge them strictly. Have you ever stocked a bird that you didn't fly, but because you liked the way it was in the nest? No. You no. only stocked from the oh, air? Only, I just picked them out of the air. Right. If a bird flew for a year, never rolled down, frequent roller, that went into my dark pen. You know. Now, when you when you used to fly, there's 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 a thing that uh, people call blur when the birds would blur. Yeah. Have you ever seen that? I've seen it, but rarely. Yes. Yeah. So you have seen it. Yeah. What I, what the, I had to check a hen here that was rolling out in my backyard, and that was the one time I seen that blur. You know. Did it shock you? Huh? Did it shock you? Were you it, surprised it by it? I couldn't believe what I was seeing, you know. It, you know, it's funny because when I first saw it, I had to question what I saw. Yeah, I yeah. questioned it. I you was know, like, I said, I, that's, that's kind of like well, what I experienced, too. Right, 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 right. Um, let's see. One other thing. Who do you think had the best birds at that time when you had when you had Smith or should I say who do you think was the second guy? You, you think Smith was the best? Who do you uh, think was I, right right next to him? Yeah. I I can't think of his name now, but there was another guy I knew from Brockton, Mass. He, he had real good pigeons, but I, I can't recall his name. So did you grow up on the West Coast or the East Coast? Oh, I I, I raised born and raised in Massachusetts. Okay, okay. How when did you when did you come uh, out here? How old were you roughly when you came out here? Well I came out here in the fifties. Okay. Early fifties. Okay. And uh I come to Cal I heard about I always liked the warm weather, you know, and of course we had the rough winters back home. Right. So I thought I'd come to California where the people used to tell me you oh, you have June weather in January. Right. But right. I come out here and I settle it down on uh, Main Street in the North Main. Yeah. And I, I took a walk. I was all alone, no car or nothing. I walked over to Spring Street one night. There's a man sitting on the curvy and pissing his pants, screaming, <laughs> screaming running down. Right. And another one laying on that side, drunk as a son. I said, mm -hmm. Holy Christ, this ain't the kind of people I want to. You were downtown. Yeah, that was on Spring Street. Yeah, I know exactly where that is. Yeah, I, I was living on North Main, mm -hmm. and so uh, I finally moved up to Alhambra, and I really loved Alhambra right. very much. Now, a question. Do you remember your first pair of birds you got? First pair of birds was commies we caught in an old abandoned mill. <laughs> they had a belfry, yeah. and we had a big a little cage around it, like, right. and the birds were all nest, and we could up, stand up on that belfry and catch these commies. They were the first ones I had. Wow. So, but it was about five or six of us kids all had commies and we'd go visit each other. <coughs> Finally, somebody strayed in a homo with a collar mark on it. Right. Oh, shit, we all wanted that picture. <laughs> you know, a banded bird. See. Right, right. So, but you, they, they were the first pigeons I had. Do you remember your first roller? Uh, well, I forget where I went and I seen the rollers. And I, oh, it was a homo. A guy named Robert McMenemy. Yeah, he had he, he was pretty famous in the home of club. But he had and rollers. I, no, but he, he straight straight in a couple of rollers. Oh. And uh, I, when I, was, I hung around with his son. Right. And uh, his son was taking a bath, so I I said I'll wait outside. And I sat outside, and the father is sitting out there outside of the house, and he's looking up at the sky. And I said, What do you see? A plane? He said, no, we're running, we're flying a 200 mile race today. I'm expecting my bird to come home. So he kept watching. And while he was there, the bird did come home. He ran up, grabbed the bird, ripped off the counterpart, counterpart mark, and put it in his time clock. Right. And, uh, and I said, gee, that's fantastic. I said, that bird came home away from 200 miles? And he said, right. yeah, he said, we're going to run, have the 500 mile in three weeks. And uh, I said, could I come back and watch? And so I did. I come back the next week and watched him. And waited with him for his bird to come home. Right. And uh, th th then he had straight in these two rollers. And so he asked me if I wanted them. 
and so I took them naturally. So they were my first rolling. Did you know who they were from, based on the band or anything? Well, you probably weren't familiar with I know the band them. numbers, but I don't know who they came from. Right. One was AU31, that was 1931. Wow. MAL, which was more than that, 1269. Now think about that. Homer's 102 years old, and he's remembering something from his childhood, and he remembers the band numbers. Yeah, well, then the hand was AU31D4330. Wow. <laughs> that, that's what you call a sharp memory. I can't remember what happened yesterday. Oh, no, I, I have some of that problem now. But Yeah, but come on. I'm a little younger than you, Homer. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, uh, what's the most you've ever paid for a pigeon? Um, I think Leroy Smith said ten dollars I paid for a pair of white ball. <laughs> That's awesome. I can't say the same, but it was so much at that time. Right, than right. It is now. Yeah, now it's worth. In relation to what yeah. we pay yeah. today, you take that ten dollars and yeah. you extrapolate with dollars, inflation. Five, five, dollars yeah, exactly, exactly. And at that time, ten dollars was probably a lot of money. Yeah, to me it was. You know, yeah, I was working for ten dollars a week. You know. Mm-hmm. So, I got another question for you. What do you think about kit competition today and how it's affected? Well, I haven't been around much in a lot of years, you know. Well, I mean, when you were flying, you know? Yeah. Do you think, I mean, because, you know, it's funny because Pensa made a statement, well, or alleged to have made this statement, that kit competition would destroy the role. Well, I, uh, I never was one for competing in that respect, but a uh, guy named Van Corpel. He had mm -hmm. his own business, and he used to come here, and uh, he says, Homer, why don't you fly, join our club? He, they had about six members, uh -huh. and so I says, uh, why? I never flew in competition. He said, well, I think your birds are good enough to fly. You could try it. So I tried the first fly, I flew, I won. I fly the second fly, I won again. Uh -huh. The third fly, I won again. For a man that didn't give a shit if he won or not. Yeah. I won three times in a while. Wow. Homer started flying his B team because he felt bad because his A team kept beating him, and the B team beat him also. <laughs> oh, wow. No, no. I, so I, I dropped. I, I was embarrassed. I heard the guy saying that fucking Homer won again. <laughs> another, another guy goes in my coop and he said, You got one with feathers on his feet. Is that you're not supposed to fly it west with your r rollers? With your rollers. I said that's just a muffed roller. Yeah. Now, <laughs> did, 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 did a lot of your Smith birds have muff on them? No, no, no. That was just one of the birds I had in my kit. Okay. Cause but they were trying to find a reason, reason why I would. Of course. Wouldn't of course. <laughs> think of course. And, and the funny part about it was, I enjoyed the fellowship more than I enjoyed the flight. After we flew, the six of us had all get over Van Carvel. We'd kick in a dollar and he'd go out and buy us all hamburgers. And we'd sit and t tell stories about the different birds we raised exactly. and so forth. And, yeah. and I used to enjoy that part as much as the fly listen Same to here. all the different old timers talking about their their birds. You know, it's funny, a lot of times what we we start out as the reasons that we get into something turns out to be less important than it really you know yeah, yeah, yeah we get into it for the pigeons but it's really well, not no, about no, the pigeons. but I enjoyed the fellowship exactly yeah I really enjoyed well I met so many fancy over the years and listen right. listen to their stories you know we all had stories about some famous pigeons we had you know exactly exactly like I love the fish and when I started to fish, I think you liked to fish at oh, one point. Oh, that's all I lived for when I was a kid. Yeah, same here. Uh, so, so, but the strange thing, after years of fishing, it became less about the fish and more about the camaraderie. Uh huh. And just hanging out with the guys. Sure. And, well, you got something in common. Yes. 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 Like yes, us, yes. See, like us all here, we all mm -hmm. like pigeons. You know? Right. Exactly. And it brings us the, together. Yeah. You know. We all like Homer. <laughs> no, no, but we have a club. Uh, a, a club we go to for all us old timers. Most of us are, are blind or uh, old, and so we all get something in common. We all well, got we're very, all going to get old. We all got poor eyesight, and uh, we're all old. So we have a lot in common to start with, you know. Richard doesn't have poor eyesight anymore. Oh, oh, that's what I've been going to ask. Did you, <laughs> did you get him sold, Richard? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, he's, he's looking bright-eyed and bushy-tailed now. Uh-huh, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. <laughs> I, I haven't heard that one for a long time, but I, I'm familiar with it. 
Yeah, when I when I saw him after uh, he had, had the uh, surgery sure, done, yeah. I said, "My God, he looks ten years younger." Huh. You know, twenty. Yeah, <laughs> he just said twenty. So, <laughs> yeah. So, can I ask who was your mentor when it came to birds? Who was the guy that 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 you looked up to and and went to? For there was now? a guy named Ed Tyrell. Ed Tyrell. Yeah, from Brockton, Mass. Mm-hmm. And uh, he got sick. And I kept all his birds for uh, for him. He was going to go out of birds. He couldn't take care of them no more. He had to go in the hospital. Right. So I took them all home and kept them for six months till he got well again. Mm-hmm. And uh, he had some of the best. Him and a guy named Fred Perry. They had the best rollers I had seen up until that time. Right. You know, it's funny because pigeon raising <clears throat> on a whole... On the West Coast, people think it's pretty large, but on the East Coast, it's on every rooftop. It is completely different on the East Coast than it is on the West Coast. It is, yeah. There are more fanciers on the West East Coast than there are on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. And they've raised so many different breeds. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Have you, have you raised, besides raising homers and rollers, have you raised any other breeds yeah. of birds? Well, I told you, Russian tumblers was one of my favorite birds. The Russian tumblers. Did yeah. they flip like rollers then? I'm not familiar no, with No, no, they got a... Chris uh-huh. and small moths, small moths. Uh, I've got two pigeon magazines. They got my picture on front page in the American Pigeon Journal and the National Birmingham Roller Club. Mm-hmm. And, and they use that same picture on, on the cover of the... And it's got the Russian tumblers yeah, with it? I think I got the magazines out in my garage. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I, 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 I've, I've raised Crest. Uh, I've made them to where they're crest and muffed and I I, I, I just like pigeons period rollers yeah. obviously are my are my passion well that was I, that was me rollers was my yeah passion. I've had fantails I've, I've had I've had, I've had a few of them for a while I like the English fantails the best uh-huh now are you familiar with that brood that that breed called a mookie mookie yeah no yeah it's a strange breed but it has the neck of a fantail but it has a tail of a roller. Oh. Yeah, so it's a roll, it's a, it's, a, it's I don't know if the bird actually tumbles, but it, it's a beautiful, I would say, type on the bird because uh-huh. it's got the fan tails, front body and, and neck, but the regular, the rest of it is just a roller's uh-huh. body or, or a standard uh, bird's body. I had a few parlor rollers for a while. Oh, you bred parlors too? Yeah, maybe a year or two. I, they used to get so beat up, you know, rolling on the ground and, and we, trying to show them there, but I, I felt that sorry for the pigeon afterwards, so I decided I didn't want them no more. Right, the parlors, yeah, they get beat up pretty pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, they're making their wings, making them go. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say, after you had established a, a fairly good um, quality bird, and you were competing, and you were winning, what became your purpose for, what was your purpose, what drove you? The thing I, as I mentioned earlier, the thing I enjoyed the most was the fellowship. That's awesome. Well, I, I've never been a competitive person, so winning was, it was naturally I like anybody it else. Who likes to win, but that it's wasn't awesome, the driving but, but, force for you. But uh, I, I didn't care. If I come in last, I wouldn't have cared. Just the fellowship I had. Yeah. Going to six different loss. Yeah. Once a month. Yeah. And watching them fly and. And, and, and like in the boys I'm with, you know, like I say, mm-hmm. all had something in common. We all liked. You know, uh, have you have you have you ever traveled abroad? Have you been to any other other countries and seen our seen birds fly? No, no, I've never done that. No, so you you've never left the United States? No, no, no not to see pigeons. <laughs> 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 no, 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 as a matter of fact, I never. Even when I met my wife, my how I met my wife, my dad. Come, I used to go deer hunting once a year, uh-huh. and you go to New Brunswick, Canada. In Maine, you could get one deer up in Canada. They had so many, they'd allow you to get two. Uh-huh. And he, when he'd come home from, he'd be gone for a week. When he come home from his hunting trip, we'd listen to all the experiences they had, you know. And uh, he come home and he said, there's a girl there that lives on a 150-acre farm, and she can milk cows. And I said, gee, that sounds like that kind kind of a girl I'd like to meet. <laughs> <laughs> because I was a country boy, you know. Right, right, and, right. And I started writing to her, and that's how I met my wife. Wow, how well, long were you married? Oh, maybe in my 18 or 20, you know, when okay. I started to write. Maybe a little, no, no, it was earlier than that, because I married, I was 23 when we got married, and she was only 19. Oh, wow. We lived together for 74 years. Wow. 
And then she died five years ago at 93. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. She lived a good well, life, well, though, well, I'm sure. Well, we had 74 years in the woods. Wow. 74 years. And that's a married life. And right. Did you guys have kids? We had, uh, two, we had two kids that lived, and she had a premature baby at uh, seven months. She was seven months pregnant. Okay. She began hemorrhaging. Okay. The whole bed was covered with blood. Oh, wow. And they called the doctor for help. They sent, sent the ambulance to come pick her up and everything. And uh, so that baby didn't make it. Mm -hmm. And uh, she came out of it. But then my wife was a very religious woman. And uh, she didn't want me to wear no protectors. Right. When we made love. <laughs> you know. I see you smiled, so I guess that was a good memory. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I tried to slam it in reverse just about the time of going to climb it. <laughs> You're on camera. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> and sometimes she'd hold me on. And she, she was so religious. Sure. Yeah. She says, if God wants me to die that way, that's the way I'm going to die. Right, but you didn't want that, obviously. No, uh, no, I didn't want to put her in my grave, put her in the grave of myself. As exactly, died, you know? exactly. But uh, every once in a while, she had been, her mom, I, I was raised a Catholic, and so we were very, they were very, uh, they preached, don't ever destroy the seed, raise your kids, you know. Right, right, so, right. Where I lived in the town of Auburn, Massachusetts, uh, about, about, I would say, 90% of the people all had eight and ten kids, you know. Right. And uh, You know where Fall River, Massachusetts is? That's 40 miles from where I lived. Yeah, I have some friends that live in Fall River. Oh, oh. Mm-hmm. A lot of Portuguese in Fall River now. Uh, well, uh, no, I I think back in my childhood and had such a ch happy childhood in Massachusetts. You know, I had the woods, the lakes, the streams, I had a canoe. And I, it, it was only from here to that orange out there to, right. to the lake, mm -hmm. and so I get it at and paddle around the way down the back end of the lake where it's all wood, and then see maybe ten or fifteen turtles sitting on a log and all that. Wow, stuff. beautiful! I I was a nature lover, right? Same here. I I think my dad taught me that. He'd say, "Oh, well, look at uh, that's what he'd point out to me." Look at them turtles sitting on the log over there. Look at that blue heron flying by with a fish in his mouth. Right. He introduced me to na nature because my father had a wooden leg, like say, from the time he was 16 years old. So he, um, he, he couldn't do sports. So I was the one boy that hung around with my dad all the time. Uh -huh. and he did. That's all he lived for, was hunting and fishing. That was his greatest joy. Mm -hmm. Same here. I love to fish. Uh -huh. I love to fish. Just to be in that environment, I didn't give a damn. If I didn't catch any fish, just, yeah. Just, just to be out on the lake by yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it gives you a lot of time to think. Oh, and to it's just, just so peaceful there, you know. It is. And it then is. One time I fished and I had a little frog. I caught a frog and I put him on my line and threw it out there, hoping to catch a bass, you know. Mm -hmm. He's moving around a little bit, nothing's bothering him. Finally, I decided to go home. I unhooked him, threw him in the lake. The minute that thing hit the water, a bass come up and grabbed them. <laughs> you know, they, they, they were wise to that line I had on. <laughs> You're like, oh man. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> what question? What do you think about roll downs? Roll down? Mm hmm. Uh, I never bred roll downs. Uh, Would you ever breed out of one? No, but uh, I, I had a kid come here one day. My birds were rolling, one roll down hit the ground. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to kill that thing when they come down. Right. He said, no, you're not. I'm taking it home. He took that home. It never rolled down for him in a different environment. So it maybe ran out of room. <laughs> it ran out of room instead of being actually a roll No, down. no, but he raised some fantastic pigeons right. from that pigeon. Right. As a matter of fact, he brought me two young ones from that pigeon. And uh, they were fantastic. They, bird that he raised from that bird. Yeah, I gotta watch Richard when it comes to roll downs because he likes to make them disappear too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. What would be the best advice that you could give a roller man in breeding his birds? What would be the best advice you'd give him? Well, I don't know. Like I say, <clears throat> by all, a lot of people like Richard could go by the body. You know, mm -hmm. he can tell them everything. Because he knows what their background is anyway. Right. But uh, I just picked from the air. I never was clever enough to know which type was the best. Right. I, when I done everything, 
I, 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 before I put a, once I got a few, a, a breeding group, uh, I, I could be very selective. So I'd fly a pigeon a year, and if it done everything that I liked, yeah, it would go in the breeding pen. But uh, I was very selective in that respect. Do you, do you remember seeing Richard Bird fly? Richard? Yeah. No, but I was telling a story a little before you came. Uh -huh. This guy came here one time and wanted to buy me, wanted me to raise him a kid of birds. Right. So I only had 18 birds, but I had two of Richard's birds. I was babysitting his birds, and I raised two young ones from them. So I said, look, I said, I can't, he wanted to buy 20 birds for him. I said, I can't give you 20 birds, but I'll give you two of Abadagic birds. And if you don't like them, later on I'll give you two more of mine. Mm -hmm. And he come back. About a year later, he said, "If you got a whole kid of, could you raise me a kid of them Avadaka birds?" <laughs> <laughs> he liked them better than mine. <laughs> wow. wow! What are you doing, Richard? Come on. Can I say something? Sure, sure. You know, I met Cornell over here. Cornell Norwood. Hold on one second. Hold on. We're gonna put this around real quick. Oh, Cornell Norwood. He's talking about. Yeah, I met Cornell Norwood over here one time. Well, actually, quite a few times. But uh, he used to say, uh, he said, it really pisses me off. Homer can just grab a couple birds, it seems, have no rhyme or reason, or uh, nobody might agree with the mating that he did, and he would just produce gold every time. And I, he said, I, I was lucky. You were yeah, lucky. well, more than luck, Homer. But he said, he said, the rest of us take so much time and put so much effort in the matings, and Homer would just, bam, and out they came. <laughs> well, I was amazed at that, Cornell. He could talk, uh, keep you so interested in describing what a role it should be like, you know. And yet, I went to his place two or three times and never saw nothing that I would want to take home. Ain't that amazing? Yeah. So Homer, you you knew Cornell pretty well. Well, he came here. I, I like I said, I never hung around with him, but right. I, I, I would see him at the show, you know. Tell him to, how you met him, Homer. Oh, this car was coming up the freeway one day, and uh, he pulls up in front of my gate, and he says, uh, "You know who owns them birds that are flying there?" And I said, "Yeah, I do." And he says, "Could I come in and see him?" And I said, yeah, come on in. So he come in, and he looked them over, and he said, would you part with any of them? I said, well, pick out a pair if you want. Damn it, he picked my two best birds because he was watching them roll. That was Cornell Norwood? Yes. Wow. <laughs> he was obviously a, 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 a good judge of pigeons, I say. Yeah, he, he used to judge some of the shows. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I, I met him several times myself. He definitely could, he definitely could hold a conversation. He, oh, he, he, he. And he knew his pigeons. He knew his pigeons well. But I was surprised that when I went to his place, I, I didn't see what I was expecting, you know. Uh -huh. But the way he talked, I thought that I'd see pigeons a lot better than what I had, you know. Right, right. I wasn't impressed at all. <laughs> I, got, I got a question for you, Homer. You, you were saying you pick them out of the air. When, when you saw the birds fly, and, and if they did everything right, you pick them for breeders after, let's say, flying over a year or, or yeah. whatever, once they were rolling. What are the, 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 the key things you look at for them to, to do right up in the air? Well, that, that, that well as long as they could roll anywhere from 10 feet to 20 feet and handle it good uh, and, and be safe for a year, I figured they would would go into the good enough to breed from. Okay? When you say handle it, see, I had enough enough good breeders that I I could be very selective in what I chose for, to add to my breeding kit, and I couldn't afford to keep 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 any more breeders. You know. See. Did what? you like more frequent birds than, than less frequent? Did you like uh, uh, birds who oh, are faster? I don't know. I used to uh, see what? until Van Coppel introduced me to a lot of pigeon fanciers. I used to just fly them every day for myself, and I would lay out there on a hammock and watch them roll for hours, you know, and I'd see some coming down 10 feet, some coming down 20, but a lot of action, and then you'd get a break, you know, where you'd get a three-quarter turn or a half turn, 
and but that was all for my own enjoyment. Until I joined a pigeon club, uh, I, I never could, ever competed, and and even once I joined it, I, like I say, outside of getting to be friends with a lot of the members, uh, I, I, I I'm not not a competitive person. In other words, right, uh, right. I never got. I naturally uh, anybody enjoys winning, but I th that wasn't my big thing of the day. Was I, I enjoyed that. I, I after after the fly enjoyed just having a hamburger and all the boys telling stories about their pigeons, you know, their experience. I used to enjoy that more than anything, you know. That's nice. That's nice. Same here. So since we're here, let's uh, let's talk to everybody that's here. Arturo. How you doing? Good. So tell me about your birds. What family what family do you raise? I have uh a Mason, Jack and Neck Cross, and also a, a Mason, Apodaca Cross, that's doing good. Uh, I also have a, a Mason, uh, Mason Reed Cross. Okay, out of the out of those three crosses, which one's doing the best right now? I'll say the. Uh, Cause that's that's a pretty wide range of crosses. Right, they're right. all going back to Mason. They're all good. doing some. They're all doing good. Some are more frequent. Some are more deeper. Which are the more frequent? The the most frequent ones are the uh, the Masons jackanets. Really? Okay. Yes. Huh. Yes. Now the Mason side of the family. Did you get those from Mason or? No, they they, they come from uh, Arizona. Okay. Through uh, George Archilega and uh, a couple other guys out there they 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 they, uh, they come from Al Luna okay Al Luna imported those birds and uh, and and several guys that, that have birds out there in Arizona I got them from them right. as gifts and I I, uh, I love them they're great kit birds they're right. competition birds yeah you know I was at uh, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Will Stenhouse Yes. So I was at his house and watching his birds fly, and I found uh, that his birds are on Mason Cross also. So I was I was really impressed with the quality of the of the roll there. So interesting. I'm gonna have to get out there and see your birds fly. You got You're three welcome. crosses. Yes. Uh, that's yes. that's just really interesting. I don't know anybody that has done three different crosses with them and maintained all three. Huh. And, and what what are you flying over there, Richard? <laughs> Everything but the kitchen sink. That's it. That's it. You heard it. You heard it from himself. Everything but the kitchen sink. Now, I know there's uh, <clears throat> some things that you're doing with your family. Just some changes and some new things. Uh, tell us about some of the things that you've done differently. Well, for one thing, uh, a lot of my birds go back to Cornell Norwood. Oh wow! Okay. And they're in. Uh, the stuff that goes back to him has been awesome. Okay. okay. Awesome. Nice. Uh, now you're, just, you're 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 a firm believer in in outcrossing and bringing fat bringing birds in. Today I do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because everything else, everything from the old timers, the old timers have come and gone, and so did their birds, basically. Right. Uh, you can't just keep beating a dead horse. You gotta. You've got to upgrade your your family every so often. Right. You got to have an outcross. Yeah, I, I think that's a secret. The guy like Larry Smith, Larry Smith, he would never, even if a bird got out on him, and they, somebody finally returned it, he wouldn't breed that once it left his eye. He was that that much of a purist. You know? Wow. And uh, yet, when I got his birds, I bred some from them. But then I made crosses, and I had ex. ex Excellent luck with the crosses because they've been kept so pure for so long. So jammed up. I think that gives them the stamina to do what you want them to do. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a thing called uh, hybrid vigor, and when you bring in something from the outside that is unrelated, yeah, your birds get an extra shot and they tend to be better in quality. Yeah, well, yeah they. they it's yeah, it's called well, hybrid vigor. It'd be just like brother and sister. Exactly. It, yeah, and you bring somebody else in from the outside, you get a totally different. Uh, Surely. Yeah. Exactly. No, I think it's. I think it's essential. No, that's what I agree with. Anyway. Yeah, I think it's a very, very, very important. I mean, Richard has always been a, uh, a person that that brings in crosses. I mean, 
I go through his family and I look at how many crosses are in his family and it's mind boggling sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how does he get them how does he keep them all, you know, organized? But well, Richard had that black badge family. What they were had rollers. Everybody rolled remembers Richard. that black badge family. Those were my first pair of rollers, Homer. And the black badge cock came from Homer. Oh it did? Yeah. Okay. And wow. the and the black ball head hen came uh, from Baldwin Park Feed. Uh-huh. Actually, we got it from some of the kids from the neighborhood. Wow. And I mated those two together, and all of a sudden, uh, Papadaka birds evolved. But but it was my first mating. I had no idea what I was doing. Right, right. <laughs> I never wanted to be a foreman. Good, good. That's what you call them. <laughs> no, they don't like it. And, and, and I, I used to help a lot of people. When, once you set these automatics up, they, they produce and you just sit on your ass and watch them run, you know. And the superintendent come over one day and he said, Homer, you got a dynasty on there. You sit on your ass all day long and don't do nothing. I said, how long have you been around machine shops? I said, an idle man and a busy machine is profit. A busy man and an idle machine and lost. Wow. I said, how, how, I thought you, you being a superintendent would know that. And he, he left me alone after that. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, when you were flying birds, what, what, what club were you in? Uh, the only club I ever joined was, uh, well, I, I, I subscribed the magazine, the National Birmingham Roller Club. So you remember the NBRC? Yeah, and, and the uh, American Roller. Wait a minute, what? I got them two magazines, I ought to go. Um, ARC? AP, AP, what is it? AP NBA? Or? No, not, not American not. Pigeon? Pigeon, a Pigeon Journal? Pigeon yeah, Journal? American Roller, I guess it was. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, but, uh, no, I, for years and years, I didn't uh, join any club or do any. Thing like that. I just used to enjoy them out in my yard. Right. My grand, my mother-in-law came to visit me for a week, and she said, "Homer, you ought to be ashamed of yourself." She said, "Just, just you're ignoring your wife." She said, "You're, you're out there watching them pigeons all every time when you go home to work. The first thing you do is leave your pigeons out." I says, "Grammy, you want? I want to tell you one thing." I said, "I do spend a lot of time with my pigeons. I could be in a bar chasing somebody else's wife around." Or there you go. I said. <laughs> she shut up after I told her that. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, did, do any of your kids did? Should I say, did any of your kids uh, um, no, like pigeons? No, no. My son had a few for a little while, but he never was cared for. Them. And my daughter, she don't even like to be around birds. You know, it's funny. I have three sons and one daughter, right? Uh huh. The only one that likes the pigeons is my daughter. The daughter. Likes yeah, it. my kids, my other boys could care less about the birds. Yeah, well, so many people like they wonder when I, I get talking to people and mention, they wonder what the hell can you see in heaven, you know? Yeah, I mean, but they were such a. I used to sit there for hours when I made them up, you know, getting them, to take their own nests and different things like that. Right. I was, I it kept me out of mischief. I mused myself right in my own backyard, you know. Yeah. Do you think that's something? Because I, I think pigeon pigeon people in general tend to be a specific breed. We're not like everybody else. I, I, I have to agree with you on that. We all have a common thread, something yeah. that binds us together. Yeah. But when it comes to the birds and our interaction with the birds, it's something that I think is a lifelong thing. It's not something well, that you can get rid of. 82 years I had pigeons. Exactly. Never, never tired of them. Exactly. Same here. Same here. As a matter of fact, I had a, always had a tendency overdo it. I always had four pigeons that I really needed. At one time I had, <laughs> I one time I had five kid, kid boxes here, you know. I can I mean, identify five, with that. Five kid boxes? You had five kid boxes at one time, you said? I had five what? You said you had five kit boxes at one time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and one of them was a double decker. We used to call it the outhouse. I, it was a tall building and I had pigeons in the bottom and pigeons in the top. How many, it divided it. How many kick cages do you have, Arturo? I have six. I have six. How many do you have, Richard? Six. Yeah, so you were modest. We all have six kit boxes. <laughs> you were modest in your day. Oh. Uh -huh. Homer, yeah. do you remember when you went out of birds? 
you, you when I went out of birds. You announced you were going to go out of birds, and everybody and their mother came over to get birds from you. And you called me a couple weeks later, and you said, Richard, how come you didn't come get birds from me? And I said, because I'm not a scavenger, Homer. Remember <laughs> that? And you said, well, I saved my two best pair for you. Yeah, I, I did. I do remember. And, and then you, I, the one pair I gave you, you was breeding a lot of young ones, but you was giving them away. And I said, that's Richard, difficult. that's the best pair of birds I had. I said, you should save some of them here. I always, always Richard get was breeds. so generous with the birds. He I still is. Still, I still do. He still yeah. is. He's very generous. Yeah, yeah. And two of those birds were the red, uh, red spangles from Cornell, Norwood, the 514. Uh huh. Remember that? No, from, I don't. Uh, that bird, I don't Chuck, remember. Chuck Zeller had got those birds from Cornell. Uh huh. And and you found. Uh, one or two of those birds at a feed store with the CJZ band on yeah, it, yeah. Chuck, Chuck Zeller, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what CJZ stands for. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Huh. I didn't know that. Wow. So, Homer, what do you think about color birds? Color? Yeah, what was your favorite color when you bred them? I, I, I always seem to favor the red, like a red check. A, a red check? Check and a red bar, you know. Okay, okay. But they, they seem to be my... A dark checker, I, I could... I could part with that very easily, you know, just all dark checkers. But yet, some they, they were some of my best rollers, the dark checkers. Mm -hmm. You had some yellows for a while. Oh, yeah. Remember I gave you a pair of yellows? Yeah. Uh -huh. And somebody borrowed them from Homer and never gave them back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, one guy borrowed a pair. I used to let people borrow. I used to like, one thing I used to get a joy out is helping the other pigeon fanciers, you know. You're just like Richard in that aspect. Yeah, yeah, that's where I learned it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I learned from you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we always enjoy helping people. And sometimes they'd come and you'd say, well, you fly the kid and say, pick out the birds you like up there. Right. Yeah, but they, after they pick out your your three, two or three bit, most frequent spinners, your kit goes flat for a while. Right, know? until something else comes yeah. up to yeah, yeah, speed. Yeah. Mm, that's funny. I heard Norman Reed uh, used to come over and and, and uh, get birds from you. Well, you know that Norman Reed, he he had people calling me from all over. He 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 wrote an article in a magazine. He said, "I've been all over the world. I've been to England and every place else. And the fastest spinners I ever seen were at my house." He wrote that article in one of the magazines. Wow. I think Sammy still has it. So uh, so so yeah. just, just just to let you guys know, if you didn't pick that up. Norm Reed wrote in an article that he's been all over the world and see pigeons everywhere, and the fastest birds he's ever seen were at Homer Coderre's house. Yeah, he said that. He wrote it in a magazine, in an article. Nice. And uh, I've been getting calls from Texas and everywhere else, people <laughs> wanting to buy birds, and I tell them all, I don't sell birds, I just raise them for my own enjoyment. Right. And, and, and that's what, the way it was. Nine times out of ten, I just give them. Somebody come like a bird, and I say, take it home, you know. I enjoyed helping someone else get started. Homer, uh, Norm told me one time, he said, he said, you know, I, I've been over to Homer's a lot of times, and sometimes his kid is not on, but, he says, I saw birds over at his house, there was just no way in hell I could ever duplicate them. Wow. No, he, he did, he gave me a lot of compliments, Norm dude. Yeah. And these are mostly Smith birds. Huh. And your family was mostly Smith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Who has, who who would you say has the most of your family today? Or somebody that is still... Dad, I don't know, but I suppose sometimes a guy come over and go to a pigeon show, come over and shake my hand and said, I've been wanting want to tell you how much I enjoy your birds. I said, I don't ever remember you getting birds from me. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I didn't get them from you. Right. But they're your birds. You yeah, know. yeah. Your family. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's awesome. That means the birds the birds have, have spread, you know? Mm -hmm. Your reputation with these birds has but, spread. But I agree with what we were saying earlier. I think sometimes an outcross is great for birds, that, like Smith birds that's been exactly. in, in bread for so years long, and yeah. years and years. Never, yeah. never an outcross. Yeah, I know a couple guys that uh, are purists in that sense, and it's funny because you can take 
a bird from the pet shop cross it to their birds and still end up with some really good birds because I, I, been, I, I, I believe that because they've inbred their birds for so long that's it they need new, new blood yeah. yeah they need a cross yeah no I'm, a, I'm no a, I, I'm a firm believer in that yeah and I wasn't always a believer in that to tell you the truth because I was one of those guys I inbred for a long time but uh -huh. I would cross out every now and then but it was more grudgingly you know uh -huh. but now yeah I've changed my tune on that one I, I'll, I'll, I'll cross a whole lot more frequent than I used well, to well one time I had a pair of birds I just used for feeders I don't know why I used, wasn't using them for breeding right but anyway I used to put eggs for my other birds on right them. you used foster well, them well this time I didn't get to change the eggs they, they raised them two young ones and they were the best birds I raised that year. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you kick yourself when you thought, my God, how many good ones did I toss? Yeah, you know? really. Well, yeah, the eggs I replaced them with weren't as good as the one they had. Right, right, right. That's funny. That's funny. <clears throat> now, I got a question for you. So when you look at uh, today, we have a really, really bad problem with the predators. We have hawks, we have falcons, you have the that, That's hawk. the only reason I don't have a few pigeons now. So, we got five different kind of hawks around here. Wow, so you got you have a lot of predators in this area. Oh, it's Because you're right here by the foothills, so. You no, know, that's why, uh, that's the biggest joy I got on the birds is watching them fly. You know? Right, right. Some people enjoy just breeding for color and whatever, you know. Right. And that's fine, but me, I, I was a, a near breeder. Yeah. And, uh, Watch them fly, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I used to enjoy myself just being here alone. Right. And watch them. Every, I flew them every day. As soon as I come home from work, I'd run out there and try to get them up before it got dark, you know. We all, I, I still do. I do, you too. Know? You, know, you know, it's funny, when you think about it, we get excited about watching the same kit fly that we saw fly eight hours before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that that that's, it never that, gets boring. It, no, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, no. You can't wait for the next day to watch yeah, them fly again. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Now, do you normally would you fly your birds twice in one day or just once a day? Once a day, normally. I would if somebody came and wanted to see them. Yeah. But normally, I would only fly them once. Yeah, yeah. I I, I flew I flew my birds twice. A lot you of times, it? yeah, when they're younger birds. Well, and that, it builds up the muscles. Yeah. What I find it for just a couple things. It builds up the muscle, but it also brings them into the role a little faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah because if you fly them once a day, they'll still come into the role. But when you're flying them twice a day, they tend to progress yeah. a little quicker. Well, that, that's one thing I notice about my birds. They were, the majority of them were late, late developers. Yeah, yeah. But they're, I mean, we today tend to prefer birds that come in earlier because we don't have 12 months mm -hmm. that they're going to fly and live. You know, the first 30 days... To, to, to 90 days they're gonna get killed you know mm -hmm. if just based on the fact that we have so many birds of prey today wouldn't you agree Richard yeah but you kind of lose stability by doing that by by what you soften the feathers so they'll come in earlier yeah the birds are less stable than oh I have. definitely agree I definitely agree that birds today are less stable than they were I mean because roll downs were kind of a uh, 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 out of the ordinary thing today you go to some people's houses and roll down is not an ordinary thing it's something that happens quite often so the feather has become a lot softer well, who were them two boys that hung around with uh, Mike Moravia remember they they had birds roll 40 and 50 feet off. that's what they enjoyed the most I said they get rolled down oh yeah we got a lot of roll downs but they didn't mind getting the rolled out. They they liked them real, real deep. You know I who know he was talking Mike, about? Mike liked them over a hundred foot, and so did his brother Pete. Yeah. So who they're talking about is Pete, Pete, and uh, Mike Moravia. A lot of people know them as the Russians in Southern California. Yes. Two very colorful characters. Yeah, I know well, them who, very well. Pete, yeah. Pete died years ago. Yeah. Right? Pete passed away. Mike is still around. I, yeah. I, I saw Mike at a but show. But he can't. He can't say. A sentence where he was in the F for <laughs> That's definitely him. <laughs> <laughs> so has yeah. he always been like that then? <laughs> oh, God almighty. <laughs> yeah, very, very colorful characters, but good guys. Um, yeah, so they were saying that they ra raised some really deep birds and have always liked deep birds. Kept them very pure, too. Mm -hmm. He's never introduced much into a into Right, so now. another purist. What, what, is, what is his family, do you know? His family is Pensum, Pensum. Okay. Back, background. Okay. And he's got Polona. He's got a Polona in there too. 
Okay, blown eye. Uh, I went to Palomas one day and he was so embarrassed. His birds all landed in a tree. He had an orchard nearby. Oh, wow. They got flying low and they all landed in a tree. He was so embarrassed. There was about six or eight of us over there to watch his birds. So that was at Stan Palona's house? Yeah. Wow. wow. But he had good, he had some good blood, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But that was just, and it was so embarrassing. It was an off day for him. Because mm -hmm. you've seen days, you, you've often probably said, I wish you were here yesterday. They're rolling their ass off, and then then somebody comes and they don't. The only one or two of them rolled, you know. Did you know? Did you know Ron Kumro? No, I heard of him, but I never met him. Okay. What about Charlie Saldana? Yeah, I met him too. Mm-hmm. But you, uh, he, he didn't use that coming here though. Okay. Did you ever see his birds fly? No. Okay. Okay. I seen you at in shows before, uh, Homer, but I never came up and helped you. I seen you at, at a couple shows. Oh, have you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I, used, I used to enjoy the show. I never got to see the figures. Just talking with all the fanciers, you know, yeah. that I've met over the years. Sometimes that's the only time I'd see them because some of them were from out of state, you know, but they would come for the pageant of pigeons. Right, right. I, I, I like the pageant of pigeons myself. Yeah, yeah I used you to You get to see so many different breeds. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. I used to enjoy that. Yeah. yeah. Like I was, like I was saying, um, I flew my number one team. You know, the family that I'm flying and I'm focusing on right now is the Apodaca family. Mm -hmm. So some of those birds are mixed with your birds. They actually have origins in your family. Mm -hmm. So, but I flew my number one team for a friend of mine, Luis uh, Contero, who came over, and they were doing really good. And as it got late, uh, the Falcon hit them and drove them back up. So I was flying a team of 24 birds. And this morning when I got up and went out there, and look, there were seven, I think, seven birds in the kit cage out of 24. Now, I mean, it's part of what, it's part of what happens, but one of the things that, that Richard taught me, and I have to say he taught me because it wasn't my philosophy prior to meeting him, is that the kit birds are expendable. And to me, that was the strangest concept mm -hmm. because I'm so used to doing it the way you did. You pick from the air mm -hmm. and those, the reason that they're so valuable because those are your next line of breeders. Yeah, exactly. Well, what Richard did in teaching me his philosophy, it changed that whole perception. Because Richard, he teaches, and his way, his mindset is that the the kit is an extension of your breeding. If you get that breeding part right, the kit will be right. If you mm -hmm. can't get the breeding right, the kit will never be right. Mm -hmm. So his focus is on the breeders and their importance, not the kit birds. Mm -hmm. When Richard would say, it's just a kit bird, I'd look at him like he was crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what do you mean it's just a kit bird? Because I'm like, that. if I lose that one, I'm done. Well, he's like, no, you make another one. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, there's no guarantee that they're gonna be just as good and it's gonna take oh, me you'll, so. You'll have a brother and sister, and maybe the brother, is, one of them is a hell of a roller, the other one just a tumbler. Exactly, well, one of the things that, that breeding his system has also uh, uh, shown me is that the level of consistency as far as how many birds come into the role and how good they come into the role is double what mine used to be. Mm -hmm. If I bred, you know, 50 birds and 25 of them were great, I'd be on cloud nine. Mm -hmm. Realistically, five of them might be great, or even two, you oh, know? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. With Richard's birds, what I found, there's a far higher percentage of birds uh -huh. that are quality. We gotta live with this, man. Be careful. I know, I know, I know, I try. You don't turn me on that way. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 you know, and, and it's funny because I've been able to let go of the kit because yeah, of it, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And literally move right on. The other thing that I've learned from him is, again, I was not somebody that at, in, in the past would move past a bird. I focused on that bird and that became the, the, how should I say, the center of that family and everything was built around that bird. Mm -hmm. With Richard's philosophy, Richard will bring a bird in, get what it wants, what he wants from it, and it's gone. He's, he's moved right past it. Mm -hmm. But he's taken what he needs, the essence of that bird, and he's been able to reproduce it yeah, and move yeah. it forward. Well, he, he's been able to do it anyway. Exactly, yeah. and it's, it's, it's really kind of amazing because a lot of people do exactly what I did in the past. They focused on that one bird, and that became, you know, the, the focal point of their family. Everything goes back to this. And Richard would go this way, this way, this mm -hmm. way, this way, this way, and it's still all in a way circled around that bird but the bird was removed from the equation a long time ago 
but he bred birds and moved forward. One of the things that I've noticed is that those families have to progress. They have to move forward, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you don't move forward in those families, it's not like you're just standing still. You're actually going backwards, mm -hmm. you know? I know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, you're not moving forward. I've seen guys that literally have stuck with the same family out of, uh, what do you call it, sentimentality for the family and not move forward because they're stuck in that in the mud with that family. Well, they're, like they're a, satisfied with what they got. Right. Some of them aren't even satisfied with what they got. They're just too afraid to move forward. Uh -huh. They're too afraid to try something new, you know, because they've identified themselves so much with mm -hmm. that, you know. I mean, me personally, uh, um, I started out with one particular family, and they were, a matter of fact, the family that I started out with was, uh, I'm sure you know him. Um, you know Dennis Godare? Yeah. Dennis Godare. Because people always conf yeah, yeah. confuse your last names. Yeah, yeah. You're Cordaire. And Godare. And Godare. Yeah. Right. He's G O D A I R. Uh -huh. Now, there's a guy that was a staunch competitor, you know? He flew up uh, in Lake Paris. He lived up in Lake Paris. Uh -huh. And he flew. Uh, some really really good birds I started with his family and I got to a point where I was stuck in that rut you know I didn't want to bring in anything in and you, one, you were satisfied with what you had yeah and but one thing with his birds they got to a point where they got stiff you know and you had to bring something in I was reluctant to bring anything in and that particular family is notoriously poor at crossing I mean, I, I, yeah, it wasn't that I just didn't want to bring stuff in. When I brought it in, my results were so horrible. I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Was you know? it too hot or, or more stiff? Stiff. Oh. But when the birds broke together, they rolled good. Their speed was great. They stiffened up after a while. But when you brought birds in, they were garbage. I mean, really, the crosses were garbage. I crossed Lemire. I crossed Red-Headed Hen. I crossed 1220 into those birds. Nothing. It was garbage. The only family that I brought in that really, really worked well was Paul Gomez's family. But Paul Gomez's family, as a rule, works with anything. I don't know what makes it that way. A uh, Rayvon Hall used Paul Gomez birds. Keith oh, you, London has used. You'll Paul. get a bird sometimes. I had a red checker hen. Right. I think her number was. You might have borrowed her at right one time, Richard. One fifty-four. A red checker. About half a dozen people borrowed that pigeon from me. In the matter. Who you put her on, she produced exactly. Uh, yeah, that, that was a, you know, hand. that don't it don't always work that way. But no, but everybody no. wanted to borrow, borrow that pigeon. They, they saw her in the air. Right, right. And then uh, and then she would reproduce. Yeah, right. she. Would, now I, that brings up a good point. Then I had a red bar cock one time, uh -huh. and that guy couldn't fly fifty feet without flipping over. Right, Just, but. I, I would normally eliminate the bird, right? But I said he's got so much stamina. All the time he's up there, he's flipping over. He's he's such a strong bird. I left him in the kit, you know. How did and it I, turn out? After after about a year or six months, one day this roller is rolling down maybe twenty feet. Yeah, beautiful. And the people said, "What's that?" I said, "I don't know." They said, "It's your red bar." I uh -huh. said, "No, he just he's just a a flipper." And sure enough, that bird. I flew him for five years, mm -hmm. and he was a fantastic roller. Wow. And I, I never bred him for some dumb reason. And the, uh, one day, the last time I flew him, a hawk cooper come along and pull him out of the air. You know, it's funny. It brings up a good point, Homer. So what Homer was saying is that he had a bird again that would flip, 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 flip. Normally, you remove those from your kit. Yeah. One of the things that I found, Homer, is if you take that bird and you feed him up, because when you when you think about it, if your kit is rolling, say, 10 times or 15 times in a, in a 30 minute, you know, fly or 20 minute fly, think how many turn t times that bird is rolling. Yeah. He's rolling way more. Well, I, he couldn't fly 50 feet without flipping. So he's going to burn a whole lot more calories. Yeah, he's but he done that for a long time. Yeah. And like I say, normally I would have eliminated him. But right. I, I figured he has so much strength to keep doing it, he, but I, I didn't expect him to turn out to be a fantastic roller, but he finally what I find What I find is those birds, uh, and Richard and I go back and forth with this because he doesn't believe me, and I take those birds and I give them, when I feed all the birds, I give that bird more food. That's the one thing too. Some of them are slower eaters than others. Oh yeah. And, and they th get weak you know right some will pick certain grains and they don't yeah, want that's to eat another everything. thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 
I didn't disagree with you. I just don't have the patience to do that. <laughs> so I kill him. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. He eliminates them. Uh -huh. I, me personally. And it's funny because some of the birds that I kept in my kit have turned out to be some of my best ones are those birds that keep flipping, but they'll stay yeah. with the kit. They just, they can't keep up and they'll stay right behind. I feed those birds up. And what happens in a very short period of time, they stop the flipping and they end up being really, really some of the top kit birds. So it's just funny you had the same experience. Mm -hmm. That is, that is interesting. Huh. Yeah. I mean, I think we all experience the same thing. You've experienced it, uh, obviously, uh, a different time than we did. But I think, what do you think? Do you think the rollers today are better than the rollers in your time? I, I, I don't really know. I wouldn't know how to answer that. Okay, so the last time you saw a kit, think back to, I'm asking a lot. Have you gone back? Well, I, you know, I've seen a lot of spinning in my late right. later years. So in your later years, compared yeah, to your earlier years. More frequent breaks than I would have, you know. Today or in your earlier years? No, no, I say at the end, when I would go visit Fancy, there was one guy that flew with us. He would get, his bird never done the time. He had to fly 20 minutes. His bird would fly only 15 minutes or 10 minutes. But those birds would make a break after break after break. Wow. They were just too hot, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you remember who that was? Yeah, John. I, I, I can't think of his last name. He was one of the boys that flew with Ben Hoppel and I. Mm -hmm. But if that guy could make the time, he would have beat my ass or anybody else. <laughs> you know, Homer rolled down at my house one time. Oh, really? So you rolled down before? <laughs> yeah, right down the bank. And <laughs> wow. He was sitting on a chair, right. on the wick, like a wicker type chair, uh -huh. and all of a sudden he fell and he hit the ground. And, and he, he had a bank in there, you know. Right. His loss, and I rolled down the bank. <laughs> <laughs> he said... So he I wasn't. decided not to stalk him. <laughs> <laughs> so you weren't stalked after you rolled down, huh? Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. No, he did. You know how the my place used to angle down from the cage, Homer, and you and we were all sitting at an angle. Well, one day Smitty, it, he was behind this. I looked out my backyard. There's a guy in a big tractor, and all these uh, truck full trucks full of lumber and stuff. And I said, what's going on here? And they said, well, we're going to flatten an area in front of your cage. We're building a retainer wall. And uh, because, because... What the hell? <laughs> the speaker oh, sounded, oh, go but, ahead. But they, uh, they said, we don't want you falling out here, Richard. And then I said, what's all that lumber? They said, well, we're rebuilding your staircase too. And this was all orchestrated by Sam here. Yeah, but you know what? We we, 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 we noticed that Richard's like 27 now, and we seen <laughs> him run up and down those stairs, so we wanted to make sure that he could continue to run up and down those stairs, yeah. you know? Because they were getting, the stairs were getting a little creaky, and I know I'm not that old, and I walked down those stairs and it freaked me out, so I was like, no, he's got to get fixed, you know? So we got a crew, we went out there, and uh, we did a little patch and repair work, and then flattened wait, out an area, wait, wait. you know, just to make sure he didn't roll down too, you know. Because <laughs> yeah. I figure if he rolls down, he's going to break his neck. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you have, no, but like you say, it was on an even there. Yeah, yeah, it's flat now in the front. Of the they had me almost crying. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, he's a good guy and he's, he's, he's very generous. He's been very generous to me um, and uh, got to have some way to pay it back, you know. Sam, and this is where I learned that generosity thing from. Nice. Homer never ever sold me a bird. He mm -hmm. always gave me a bird. I and really. He would let me pick his best, and he wow. wouldn't tell me they were his no, best. No, no, I, I don't wow. with everybody, Richard. I, yeah. I, I used to enjoy letting people borrow them. But one guy had to buy pigeons for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. and I said, hey, you never brought them back. He said, well, I'm not done with them yet. <laughs> 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 well, I remember somebody that had an ash red hen, a strawberry hen, and I said, can I have that one back now? And, and this person said, no, i got to get another round or two out of her first. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that, Homer? Yeah. <laughs> it was him. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Do you know uh, uh, Sam Gutierrez? Oh, of course. I, I've known Sam since he was 18 years old. Good guy. Very good guy. I met him over at Dave Sanchez's. Yeah, and he was named correctly. Sam, uh, I like that name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but he, 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 he's a likable person. He's a very likable person. I, I don't know nobody. I, I never heard nothing bad about I've him. I've never heard no anybody could say a bad word about him. No. He's, he's a very, very good guy. And he was so good to his mother and everything. Right. Yeah. He's just I, a nice person, too. He is. You know? He's a good person. He's got Lee Myers on. Lee Myers. Well, he has 771. He has Lee Meyer. He has 5009. He has the... Uh, he's a big uh, 5009 guy. He likes 5009. But he had his cat trained so they wouldn't bother the pigeon. Really? He, what he did when he was kidding, he took the pigeon off the nest or put it in there and had the pigeon slap him. He, he said that's how he trained him not to wow. bother the pigeon. Mm, a miser. Yeah, but he was so such a good. After his mother died, she loved cats, right. and he would take them and bring them to her grave and all stuff like. Oh wow! That. He's a good and then son. he got a brother, you know, that uh-huh. was mentally not right. And, okay. Uh, he was living with him. Mm. He took him in and gave him a home. He's just a compassionate person, you know. Yeah, yeah. He's a he's a good person. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. He's definitely a unique person. Not you don't find a lot of people mm-hmm. like Sam. And you know the funny thing is I've known him for years. He's been so consistent, you know what I'm saying? He's right. never changed. No, no, no. He's you're, been the same guy right. from the time but, I met him to now. But you know the strange part about him? He hung around with Manuel Pacheco. Which and, and, <laughs> and, and people come here <laughs> and they say, you can bring Sammy, but don't bring Manuel. <laughs> uh, I, I, I never knew anybody that really liked Manuel, you know? <laughs> you know, uh, he's a different type of guy. Oh, well, you know? he, well he come here and he's just... Stop picking up. I had pigeons in a different cage, and he, yeah. I'm going to take 20 of these home. And I said, wow. I don't want. He said, You're not doing nothing. With them. What the hell do you want them for? I wasn't breeding them, so he, he was just told me he was going to take them. You know? Wow. Yeah, he was very nervy. Yeah, <laughs> Manuel was dead. Wow. Different. He's a different wow. kind of guy. But, you know, the last time I saw Manuel, <laughs> right? I didn't think it was him. Right. So I went to a show or somewhere where Manuel was, right. and he's talking about. Where he lives, how he enjoys watching the wild turkey, mm-hmm. all that kind of. I was interested, so interested in him. I said, "Gee, I'd like to get to know that guy better." I said, "You I, didn't realize who it was." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, I actually didn't know it was him. Right, wow. right. <laughs> well, you know, people t- sometimes people turn over and turn a new leaf yeah, and change. Well, well he, 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 I, I would never guess him for the person that was telling all the stories about the, the wildlife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> That's an interesting one. Um, so, tell us about some of the people that you came up with that uh, that were well-known, well-known famous guys that are probably long gone, but that you came up with that really raised some good rollers. Well, I, well like Fred Perry uh-huh. and Ed Tyrell. Right. And who was that guy? I can't think of his name, but there was another guy. He, he, he had fantastic pigeons. Mm-hmm. I mean, were you were you into the depth? What 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 fascinated you more, the depth or the speed? The, the, Did you like the depth or the speed? Oh, I just liked a lot of action. I uh, I wasn't uh, even if they were a lo- loose roller. Mm-hmm. For years, I just enjoyed watching them come down. Right, right, because right. Because they had control. Mm-hmm. That was one thing I tried to shy away was when they hit. I didn't want to breed from a, a right. roll down. But, right. but uh, no, I wasn't as fussy as some people. Right. Like, I had one bird. Some guys came here one Saturday morning. I got one bird rolling 50 feet. But he was loose as a goose, you know what I mean? Right, His right. role wasn't worth a shit. And I said, wow, there's a champion. <laughs> wow. You what know? was the guy's name? It was, I met a guy that had your family. Um, you have to help me here, uh, Richard. Sal? Yes. Thank you. Sal. Uh-huh. Sal that lived in Lake Paris. Yeah, when Homer went on to birds. What was Sal's last name? Uh, Estrada. Sal Estrada. When yeah. Homer went on to birds, uh, Homer gave a lot of his Houghton birds to Sal. Yeah. Oh. So your birds were Houghton? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. At that okay. point in time, they were. Yeah. Well, well, you know, the funny thing is, do you know where Houghton, Joe Houghton got his birds from? Ron Cumro. Oh, is that right? Yeah, Ron, or is it the other way around? Mm hmm. So you had Joe Houghton and Ron Cumro. 
Yeah, Joe Houghton, or no. Yeah, well, Houghton was famous. He was no. So it's probably the other way around. It's probably yes, the other way around. Ron Cumro got his birds from Joe Houghton. Yes. But I know that one thing I know for sure that the Houghton birds and the Cumro birds were the same birds. So my family, the Dennis Godare family, it was actually um, Houghton on one side, and then uh, you had Tim Davis. Uh, so it was Houghton, Davis, and a couple other families mixed in there. But it was really um, Ron Cumro. Joe Houghton, Tim Davis, those were the basis of the... Uh, oh, you also had some Stuart Forsythe. Did you know Stuart Forsythe? Stuart Forsythe, did you know him? Who? Stuart. No. No, that's the other family that made up my family. But, uh, so it's funny, your birds were Houghton, so my birds were part Houghton. Mm -hmm. So we actually had something in common well, there. Hou 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 Houghton was a famous man. Right? Yeah, so so those the Cumro birds probably came from Houghton. And if anybody out there knows the true story where Ron Cumro's birds come from, uh, shoot me an uh, uh, inbox and uh, let me know. I seen you at a show with uh, John Sandoval. You know Chuck John? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He imported a lot of birds, English birds, uh, from uh, George Mason. Uh, Did you ever get to see any of those birds? Uh, I only went there once, I think, or, or maybe not at all. I knew I knew him, in the, but uh, I never remember anything fantastic about him. Now, a question: Is George Mason still raising birds today? Yes, yes. And he's in where he's he's in England, I England, suppose. Yes. You know exactly what part of England? No. So, so George Mason, if you get to see this video, this is Smitty from Roller Pigeon Evolution, and I'd like to meet you. So, if you get a chance. Shoot me an inbox mail, and I may just jump on a plane and hop a pond and come over there and meet you. So, very interested in your birds and your family. Oh. From what I've seen out here of the Mason birds, definitely good. But you know, it's going to come the way we got the hawk problem. Look, a lot of the pigeon fans said, I know went out of birds just because of hawks. They can't fly them. I know, it is, it is, it know, is we've rather the, bad. We've, we've got about five different kinds kind of hot here now. And yeah. That cooper stays down low, of course, and then you get them when they're either liberated or coming in for landing. Mm -hmm. But then you got all the other kind of hawks, the peregrine, falcon, and everything else. Well, now you've got the hybrids, where they're they're crossed with yeah, the peregrine that's another thing. and uh, cooper hawk. So they actually catch them up high, and they'll chase them all the way down low into the trees, like, yeah, like yeah. a cooper. Yeah, yeah. It, they're pretty, pretty no, bad. No, no, no. You, you, you can't... Not no young kids in the pigeons anymore because they try to train them and they they, they eat them. The, the hawks get them and they yeah. get discouraged and go out of birds. Yeah, know? yeah, it is. It is it's, kind it's, of it's, frustrating. It's a dying, dying hobby, really. You know what? Well, one of, one of the things that we try to do is by doing these videos and doing these interviews is to try to inspire the next generation of roller men. You know, uh -huh. because it's funny the strangest. Yeah, yeah but with the hawks, hawks. You have to breed numbers. The only reason I don't have a few pigeons here is yeah. if we didn't have the hawk, I could leave them out. Just watching them pick around the ground exactly. and having a few pigeons here, yeah. I, I would do it. But the, the, you can't do that no more. No, no. It's you used really to hard. years ago. I used to get my pigeons free whole sometimes on the weekends, you know. And is that an old kick cage I see over there? It looks like there's a kick cage sitting over there still. You see it, Tura? He has a, a breeder cage back here. Oh, he still has, you still have a breeder cage? Huh? Yeah, that's a kick cage. Yeah, I thought it was a kick oh, cage. Oh, yeah, that's that his breeder cage over there. Yeah. On the right. So you still have your that. breeder cage? The, the main, main coop, yeah. You ever go out there in it? i got to use it for junk, all my junk I sell. <laughs> storage. <laughs> it's an outhouse now, huh? Over here. Uh, <laughs> this place has a big uh, backyard. Two, this is for 200 feet deep, yeah. Is there another house there? Huh? Is there another house in the back? No, there's a, a hospital right behind me. No, no, but is there another, or is that your pigeon, is that your law? No, no, no way. Oh, that is the law. Wow. Yeah, this, this yard is cross fence. I have it, uh, but uh, you go through the gate and you still got another 25 feet. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking earlier, and I don't think you got this on tape. Okay. Where I came over and I needed a cockbird. Yeah. From Homer, did that go on tape? Mm -mm. Oh, and and Homer told me uh, go to my kit cage and pick one. Right. And uh, so I went there and I picked this dark check cock, 
And a year later, I told Homer, I said, man, I raised some good birds out of that cock bird. And he said, you should have. You picked the best bird in my kit. Uh oh, he and, grabbed the best and, bird in your and kit. I, and I said, why didn't you tell me? And Homer said, because I knew you wouldn't take it if I did. <laughs> that's, 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 you know, he's got a heart of gold. That's awesome. That's Always awesome. Has. See, if he'd have came over to my house and picked the best one, I'd slapped his hand and said, keep going. <laughs> no, I, I used to enjoy helping people get them. No, like I, I had a, a, a red bar up there that was a star of the kit right. when I was flying in competition. And everybody wanted to buy that pigeon. I gave it to Hep Perez. Do you know him? Hep Perez. I've heard the name. I don't, I don't he, think he's a hell of a good kid. And uh, he he never would come, he never made want to fly or even come in second or third, you know. Right. And so, uh, like I say, everybody wanted it, but I gave it to him. Right. And he was so appreciative. He raised me two young ones from him. He gave them to me. And uh, I flew them and they were fantastic. They were both about 25 feet. Right. Perfect. And a guy come here, what the hell is his name now? Um, oh, shit, this guy from up north. Anyway, I had a lot of West at that time. West of England? Huh? West of England Tumblr? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, at one time I had quite a few of them. And, uh, anyway, he said he wanted a, I'd like to get a couple of pair of your birds. And I said, well, go, go out there and pick a couple. He took that pair that, that Hep had raised from me. Right. And, shit, and this guy, I wasn't very fond of him anyway. <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, he come over here one day and, uh, he, who, who? John, not John Vanderbrock. That might be the one that he, he, he gave my birds to that he took from here. And then uh, <clears throat> I, I think the guys told me, so he came and said, Oh, well, how'd you do? Did you get some good young ones and birds you took? Took from me the cat ant or, or, or squirrel. The, uh, squirrel. Oh, yeah. That thing will come and take a peanut out of the hand. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you told me Homer, you told me Homer was blind, Richard. No, he's not blind. When I, when I, no, no, I'm. I, all, all I can see is a, a, a movement. And then I was like, I know it's just legs. So I, I'm know. thinking for myself, for a blind guy, it was pretty good to use notice there was a squirrel over there because I didn't even hear him. So that's pretty good. No, well, I just seen the, the four legs going across. Right. And so. there, I don't know if you got this story too, Sam. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody, okay. somebody came over and they were watching Homer's kit. Oh. Right. And he had a great bird in there. Right. And the guy said, do you want to sell that? And Homer said, no. And the guy said, I'll give you 50 bucks. And Homer said, how would you like it wrapped? <laughs> <laughs> so, so on that note, I'm going to close this session. Um, I want to thank uh, Homer Cordero for being so gracious to have us oh, at, at your house. Oh, it's a pleasure for me to have you. You know, like they say, I used to get a lot of visitors, but since this virus came, Everybody says I want to come by, but I can't come. It's, you well, know, they're you know, afraid of you know, me. This interview is one that I've wanted to do for quite a while, and I've talked to Richard about it. And Arturo and Richard facilitated getting me yeah. here. And uh, I just want to thank you for sharing your time and your knowledge with well, us. Well, I don't have much knowledge. No, you definitely do. It's but, life uh, experience. But Richard, he's a, he's a good person. Definitely, definitely. So pay attention to the things we talked about today, folks at home. And... Uh, just know that we've had a unique experience uh, here with uh, Homer Cordero, um, Arturo Sanchez, and uh, Richard Apodaca. And make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and remember, you only know what you know. This is your host, Smitty, from Roller Pigeon Evolution. See you on the next one.